Ministers, we have uh, another uh, inaugural speech uh, to listen to. So again, the normal courtesies will, of course, apply as I give the call to the Honourable Pierre Yang on the question that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Pierre Yang. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Congratulations on your election to this high office, and I also like to congratulate to the Honourable Kate Dust um, on your election as the first female um, president of the Legislative Council of the Parliament of Western Australia. I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional lands of the Wuja Noongar people and pay my respect to elders of both past and present. I'd like to begin my first speech with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgave those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Madam President, I thank the people of South Metropolitan Region and WA Labour for their trust and support in electing me as a member of the Legislative Council. As a matter of fact, my presence here today is pretty unlikely. I am only the second Chinese West Australian and the third Asian West Australian to be elected to this Legislative Council of Western Australia in its entire 186 years history. Hence, it is an extraordinary privilege and honour for me to be able to speak on the floor of this historic chamber. Madam President, I am a migrant. I was born and spent the first 15 years of my life in China before coming to Australia as an overseas student. The Chinese culture goes back 5,000 years. It puts on a lot of emphasis on respect for one's ancestors and the seniors, self-restraint, moderation, family and collectivism. I'm proud of my Chinese heritage. My mother and father decided to send me to study in Australia because they heard that Australia was a beautiful country with a very strong and excellent education system. I must thank my mother and father for their foresight. When I came to this great nation in 1998, I as a non-English speaking background person, never thought that one day I would be elected by the people of Western Australia as a member of the Legislative Council. As this has turned out, Australia is indeed the land of opportunity and the land of the fair go. Some three years after I came to Australia, I joined the Australian Labour Party on the 3rd of September 2001. I joined because I was attracted to its core values. The Labour Party believes in a fair and compassionate society where a fair day's work will retain a fair day's pay and the most vulnerable of our community are supported and protected. The Labour Party believes in giving voice to the voiceless and creating jobs for the jobless. And the Labour Party believes in giving people a fair goal. After completing high school education in Sydney and Perth, I went on to study law, political science and philosophy at the University of Western Australia in 2002. After my study, I was trained as an articled clerk by my mentor, Mr. Raymond Tan, for about a year and then he spent the next few years training me to be a competent legal practitioner. Mr. Tan helped me tirelessly and patiently to improve my verbal and written English skills. I owe him and his wife, Miss Annie Sim, a debt of gratitude. Without their support and training, I couldn't have set up my own practice back in 2013 and become self-reliant. During my 10 years in the legal profession, I mainly practiced in family law, and I frequently dealt with violence restraining order cases. I experienced firsthand how inadequate the system could be when it comes to protecting the most vulnerable. In one extreme case, the former partner of a woman, he breached the VRO protecting her more than 200 times. She was genuinely fearful for her and her children's lives. I believe the system should be more responsive 
and more efficient in protecting the most vulnerable. Madam President, I mentioned previously that Australia is the land of opportunity and the land of the fair go. Not that I was, not was, excuse me, not only that I was accepted to study law and later welcomed into the legal profession, but I was able to join the Australian Army Reserve as a general service officer. I must admit at the beginning it wasn't easy. During the early part of my training, some doubted how a Chinese immigrant who couldn't even speak English properly could possibly of use to the Australian Army. Lieutenant Colonel Fe John Fisher and Sergeant Max Duguid were willing to give me a go at the very critical junctures of my Army Reserve time. I thank them for their trust and faith in me, and I'm glad I didn't let them down. I would also like to thank Lieutenant Colonel Max Stewart, Commander Michael Pounder, Major David Graham, Major Sean Feng, Major John Leaston, Captain Jim Patterson, Captain Brenton Just, Captain Joe Harper, Captain Demilza Newlaf, Captain Charlotte Ullard, Lieutenant Matthew Papalia, Warren Officer Second Class Callan Ford, Sergeant Matt Erkins, Sergeant Mark Drew, and Sergeant Peter Dutch, and many others for their friendship and support during my Army Reserve years. I served in the Australian Army Reserve for more than 10 years. The Australian Army is one of the most egalitarian and multicultural institutions I have ever been involved in since my arrival in Australia. The Army's four core values, courage, initiative, teamwork, and respect are instilled in me. The Army has changed me forever. It trained me to be a leader, to be a more resilient and a more resourceful person, and in the end, a better person. I'm very glad that I've served Australia and my fellow Australians on Operation Southern Indian Ocean and have contributed to the effort for the search of the missing Malaysian Airlines MH370. Madam President, I would like to thank the good people of the city of Gosnells. I began living in Langford in 2005. Um, and we are blessed with many good neighbours. We experienced firsthand that the people of the city of Gosnells are happily living together in a multicultural community. The annual event, Multicultural Food Fair, which is organised by the city of Gosnells in Langford, are attended by thousands of people and more and more are attending that each year. After living in the city of Gosnells for eight years, I decided to put my hand up to serve my local community as a councillor in 2013. Of the 25 candidates of that election, I was elected with the third highest number of votes. I thank the 5,358 people who put their trust in me, and that number never escapes my mind. With their support, I became the first East Asian-born councillor for the city of Gosnells, and I believe that result is the testament of people's support for multiculturalism. I would like to acknowledge Councillor Owen Searle, the mayor of the city of Gosnells, and former councillor, um, councillor Ron Hoffman, for their friendship and mentoring during my time as a councillor. I would like to thank the WA Chinese community. In particular, I would like to thank Dr. Edward Zhang, JP. I met Dr. Zhang shortly after I arrived in Perth. He advised me, encouraged me, and supported me on my journey to become a parliamentarian. Dr. Zhang is like an uncle to me, and I'm privileged to have known him. I would also like to thank the following people from the Chinese community for their encouragement and support. Ah Hong Lai, Ai Kua, Fei Zhi, Xu Yi, Wang Xiaoxiang, Lin Xiangpei, Ban Pan, Huang Feng Zhuo, Tom Wang, Feng Yun, Kevin Zhang, Tim Song, Leong Zhu, Zhong Hong, Bruce Sun, Mark Sun, Yang Chun, Lu Liang, Yuan Jianwen, Zhang Ting, Simon Yan, Lin Zi, Qian Guiyuan, Zhou Wei, Peter Zhao, Herbert He, Wu Ming, Sophia Tang, Ding Xiaoping, Chen Ting, Su Li, Sun Xiaoxing, 
Yolanda Wang, Yuan Haobo, Chen Jie, Fan Lingquan, and many friends of mine in the Chinese community. The Chinese community has existed in Western Australia since the early 1800s. In the 19th century, there were two waves of Chinese immigration into this great state. The first wave of Chinese immigration was mainly of indentured uh, coolies, which literally translates as hard laborers. They were organized by the colonial government back in the 1840s and 50s. The second wave happened in the 1880s, and those Chinese were mainly of free settlers, who came and set up small businesses such as market gardens, Asian grocery stores, and laundries. At its peak in the 19th century, Chinese were the second largest non-indigenous group in Australia, but the overall proportion in the total population barely passed 3%. In the second half of the 19th century, community support for Chinese migration, which was originally built on economic reasons, gradually lost momentum. Many pieces of legislation passed by this very parliament with the aim to limit among other ethnic groups, Chinese migration. For example, the Act to Regulate and Restrict Chinese Immigration, 1886, it imposed on how many Chinese a ship could carry, um, carry into WA and how much poll tax Chinese had to pay before entering. Goldfields Act, 1986, excluded Chinese from obtaining any license on any goldfield. The Chinese Immigration Restriction Act, 1889, required all Chinese and only Chinese who intended to enter WA to obtain a permit beforehand. There were also legislations which were not specifically referred to Chinese, but were used in a way to disadvantage the Chinese in practice. Such legislation included the Shark Bay and Pearl Shell Fishery Act, 1886, and the Immigration Restriction Act, 1897. At Federation, these sentiments culminated in the Immigration Restriction Act 1901, Commonwealth. One of the first legislations passed by the new federal parliament, this act marked the beginning of the white Australia policy. In the following decades, Australia gradually moved on from the white Australia policy and eventually abolished it and adopted multiculturalism as its own official policy in the 1970s. Forty years on, Australia is the most multicultural nation in the world. I believe that one of the fundamental pillars of multiculturalism is mutual respect. It is human nature to be fearful to the unknown and the unfamiliar. But instead of being fearful to the unfamiliar and unknown cultures, Australians have shown great warmth and respect to all newcomers. Australia and Australians have done so much more than just merely tolerating the immigrants. In my humble opinion, tolerance is not the right word to describe the relationship between communities and cultures. Not only are immigrants tolerated, we are embraced and accepted as equals by our fellow Australians. In comparison to the Chinese West Australians living here a century ago, I am lucky to live in modern Australia, which is inclusive, harmonious, generous, respectful, and multicultural. This is to the credit of my fellow Australians, and I am proud to say that I am an Australian too. Multiculturalism is the right way to to move forward for us as a nation, as a state, and as a people. Our Lord has created us in his image, and we are of many diverse ethnicities, and it is his wish that we look the way we look. We should follow his teaching to love and care for one another, irrespective of the way we look or the color of our skin. Like Dr. Martin Luther King, I also have a dream. I dream that when my two young children and all children of today grow up, they can live in an even fairer and more respectful society where they will not be judged 
by the color of their skin or ethnicities, but by the content of their character and deeds. I will do all I can to strive to achieve that dream. Talking about multiculturalism, there is no party that supports multiculturalism more than the modern Australian Labour Party. I have the greatest admiration and deepest respect for Gough Whitlam, Bob Hawke and Paul Keating, who were instrumental in, in the establishment of multiculturalism in Australia. The Labour Party advocates for the dreams and aspirations of everyday Australians, including new Australians. The Labour Party believes that all Australians deserve a decent life and its deep support for social equality is originated from the labour movement and later heavily influenced by the, tradition, the traditions of Catholicism. Well, on this topic, I would like to thank Father Timothy Cochrane, the priest at the Thonley Sacred Heart Church, who brought me to the Catholic faith many years ago. The more I learned about Catholicism, the more I realized the similarities between the Labour Party values and the Catholic tradition. I'm proud to be Labour and I'm proud to be Catholic. I would also like to especially acknowledge Caroline Smith, the Secretary of the United Voice. Caroline is a great friend and great inspiration since we met many years ago. She's a person of great integrity and talent and I thank her for her unwavering support for multiculturalism and diversity in politics. I would also like to thank Mark McGowan, Sue Ellery, Roger Cook, Alana McTiernan, Steve McCartney, Christy Kane, Simon Mead, Chris Tallentire, Amber J. Sanderson, Terry Healy, Mark Reid, Sheila McHale, Yvonne and Ray Omasini, Jack and Mary DeGroot, Brian and the late Agnes Wright, Ima Roebuck, Sarah Seymour, and many, many others for their friendship, help, and guidance over the years. I'd also like to thank those who helped me during my campaign. Patrick Gorman, Linda O'Shallon, Caitlin Gorda, Sarah Keegan, Alicia Anderson, Matt Kavanagh, Kay Hallahan, Marion Boswell, Yu Han He, Judy Drew, Simon Wu, Bruce Zhang, Miki Sun, Chris Chen, Liang Xiao, Kevin DeSouza, Wang Jia, Tom Bayer, Kevin Drick, and the hundreds of people who supported me and volunteered their time during the campaign. Without the help and support of those I have mentioned, I wouldn't be standing here today. Madam President, Australia is known as the lucky country and many of us are doing very well in this free country. Yet, there are some who are doing it very tough. More and more Australians have become homeless and it is estimated that there are over 105,000 Australians who are homeless on any given night. This is a real human tragedy, especially so because Australia is one of the richest country, countries in the world. I'm passionate about fairness and social justice, and I'm proud of the Labour Party's achievement and history on these issues. One of the first things I've done after knowing that I was elected as a member of the Legislative Council was to register for the St. Vincent de Paul Society's 2017 CEO Sleep Out. I've donated to the Sleep Out for many years, but I hope that participating in the 2017 Sleep Out, I can help to raise more awareness about this very sad social issue and to make a small contribution. We as a nation will be judged by the history on how we treat the most vulnerable among us and we parliamentarians are duty bound to do more. All people are created equal. I'm especially proud that Mr. Mark McGowan and WA Labour promised to expunge historical convictions for LGBTI people convicted of crimes that would not be illegal today. Now Labour has been elected and Mr. McGowan is our new Premier. I look forward to be part of that legislative process which will carry through that commitment. 
If people are created equal, then it should be self-evident that in a modern democracy, all voters should be given the same weight with their votes when selecting their representatives. However, a non-metropolitan vote for the Legislative Council in the 2017 election on average weighs three times of a metropolitan vote. And some non-metropolitan votes are worth almost six times. The Honorable Dr. Jeff Gallup AC once said it does not make sense either logically or ethically to establish the right of a person to vote and then diminish that value of that vote in relation to the votes cast by others. Hence, if you believe that all people are created equal, then you have to believe it all the time. An electoral reform to the method which we elect members of the Legislative Council is needed in order to achieve that equality. Having lived in China for the first 15 years of my life, and then in Australia, I hope I can put my experience in both cultures into good use and help to foster, in addition to the strong trade relationship, a better people-to-people -people and culture-to-culture -culture relationship between Western Australia and the greater Asian region. Last but not least, I'd like to acknowledge my beloved wife. Although having little interest in politics, Hazel has always been willing to help the Labour Party and myself. She started letterboxing and volunteering her time for the party soon after we began our relationship some 13 years ago. She even stepped up to be a booth captain on the 11th of, Mar <clears throat> on 11th of March. <clears throat> it is not easy for my wife to look after our two boys, Pierre Jr., who is five years old, and Malcolm, who is two years old, by herself, as I was of often absent from home. The good thing is we now have two extra volunteers who have already started at the boxing for the party. I feel so privileged that I've always had Hazel's fullest support in whatever I pursue, and I will strive to earn her continued support and trust. I would also like to thank my extended family for their help and support, especially my parents-in-law, my mom, my cousin Nick, and his wife Joyce. Madam President, President, Confucius once said, Qian li zhi xing, shi yu zhu xia. A journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. I'm ready to serve the people of Western Australia, and the journey begins now.